Hey guys, Gravy here, and today I just wanted to make a quick video about button configurations, and I just want people to understand that with the button configuration that we have as the default on the Smashbox, we kind of intended it to be something that just fit it that just fit the highest amount of users possible because we are assuming that there's going to be people playing Smash 4, um, Smash 64, Smash 5 in the future, even you know Resident Evil 5 speedruns and stuff on this thing. So we we kind of wanted to just make it as intuitive as possible for the for the highest number of people so that means that you might be in this video thinking that it's not best suited for your for your competitive needs and that's what i'm here to help you guys figure out i'm going to show what differences my layout has from the original um, default and talk about why i did that and, and kind of come up with ideas for what i would do if i played different characters or maybe even different games so First things first, what you should know is that the most important buttons on the Smashbox are the buttons that are underneath your middle and your pointer finger. Going from your middle to your pointer finger is a really comfortable motion for almost everybody, and it's going to be something that's going to be really consistent. So any action that you want to be the most consistent at, you should really try to locate on these buttons. That's why for me, uh, I have L and B. The only thing is I, I have L on top and B on the bottom, which is reverse from the original Smashbox, but that's really just a matter of preference. I don't think that's too big of a deal. But let's say I was still maining Captain Falcon. As a Falcon player, I don't need the B, so having it on my index finger would be a complete waste. So I would definitely switch it out for Z because I care most about getting perfect jump cancel grabs, and I can use Z to nair. And if I had Z and L, then I can you know wave dash around. I could get my my nairs out and everything like that. Alternatively, maybe I'll go for A uh, because you know jab's pretty sick too. So it's nice to have like aerial into gentleman unlock. Let's say I were a Samus player, I might even be more inclined to go for, for A because Z is not as good for her, obviously. Her grab's terrible, so maybe she would just do L and A, and that way she would be as good as possible at just wave dashing around, putting out her tilts, putting out her chaps. The next buttons that I want to talk about that I think are really important are your pinky buttons. On the default, we have the right pinky button on the bottom set to R, which I actually think is something that you guys should keep. I actually had a disagreement with Dustin Huffer, the guy who invented the Smashbox, about this in the beginning because I thought the pinky was just too weak of a finger to be consistent at doing anything. But I've realized that with the shield in particular, it's nice that most of the time you press the shield, you intend to kind of hold it for a little bit. And if you want to go for something like Wave Shine or Wave Dash or Jump Cancel Shine or an aerial out of shield, it's okay to continue holding that while you aerial. So if my pinky is sitting here holding down R, it's easy for me to just do any kind of aerial or any kind of action on a shield. And I think that's really important. So I actually really like shield on the pinky. And kind of under the same concept I have on the left side, on the left pinky, um, that's such a shield tilt for me, i.e. light shield. Because, again, I hold it most of the time that I ever press it. I don't have to, you know, do it quickly out of any kind of motion or anything like that. So... It's just a really nice, comfortable place, and it's a good way to, to spread the action across your whole hand so that you're, you're kind of minimizing the workload on each finger. The next change I made was actually sort of a strange one. I took C-Stick up, and I just removed it from this cluster of C-Stick buttons, and I, I put it on my ring finger. The reason that I do this is because for certain techniques, uh, especially something like shield stop down air, it's... It's just a lot of travel time for me to go from holding C-Stick up in order to get my buffered shield stop into, sh into short hop and uh, to go from that immediately to an, another C-Stick press for my aerial. So it's just a lot of travel time. So I actually prefer to have them on two different fingers so that uh, that eliminates the travel time for me. A small downside to this has been that I have noticed some awkwardness in going for jump canceled up smash, especially if I ever try to do it using Y or X for the jump. But to compensate for that, I've started just doing tap jump so that my left hand does the jump and then my right hand does the up smash, and that, that has overcame the difficulties a little bit. It maybe would be even better if I had this on the top button of the ring finger, but you guys can test that out yourselves and figure it out for yourselves. Removing the C-Stick up button from the C-Stick clusters obviously gave me room for one more button. 
and for this one i chose mode i only use mode for like one specific firefox angle so it's not something i press very often so i, I just figured put it here I, I basically chose between this spot or the top button of my pinky my right pinky and i i prefer this spot it's a little bit more comfortable for me the last change I made within the C-Stick cluster was to put Z in the middle of it and C-Stick down on the bottom of it. This is again to reduce travel time. If I'm doing something like a late backer and then L canceling with Z, I don't like to have to move across two button spaces in order to get to that Z press because uh, with backer it can be super low and it can only be a four frame uh, timing window to move from this button to the next. On the modifier group, my Y1 and Y2 are the same, but I put X2 here and I swapped X1 for tilt because tilt can in a lot of ways replace the functionality of X1, but that's going to be something I cover in the next video anyways. And again, this is going to be largely preference. Some characters may not even have to use certain modifiers, so you should figure out which buttons are more, most important and put them on the easiest to hit buttons. And the last button that I forgot to mention is that I just have A here basically through process of elimination, but I do want to make one more point before I end the video, and that is that you do have multiple profiles on the Smashbox, so if you play characters that have different demands like this, it might be wise to see if you can handle having two different profiles. It might be weird on your muscle memory, or it might be something that comes easily to you, but I would definitely recommend trying out at least having multiple profiles for um, either, whether it be multiple games or multiple characters within Melee. I think it's a very, very good feature. So guys, that's it for this video, and the next video I'm going to make is going to be about the tilt button, because the tilt button's super good, and it's relatively new to us. But I want you guys to leave a comment telling me what kind of content you're looking for, and if I'm on the right path here, and that'll give me some ideas of, of what the people who are new to using the Smashbox are looking for.